Stick with me for, for like 45 seconds. I'm going to get to awesome art soon, but first, two magnets. There's this point when you're holding two magnets where you can barely feel the attraction. It's long before that happens. It's just like in your bones, you can almost sense the pull. Also works if you turn it upside down and that repulsion that magnets do, just that, just that moment where you can sense it trying to pull away from itself. There are works of art that have that feeling, that like in your bones feeling of attraction or repulsion, and an even more narrow category that does both. It's something I call a bipolar blind spot. And a perfect example is on view right now, the work of Peter Lind Busk at the Derek Eller Gallery in the Lower East Side through May 26th. Peter's work is, is a collection of dozens of different types of materials all kind of mashed together in what can best be described as a crossbreed between a mosaic, you know, the tile things, and a typesetting box, like a printmaking matrix. It is a treasure hunt on drugs. It is a where's Waldo where there is no Waldo, or maybe there's 40,000 Waldos. The point is that you never get sick or tired or bored of looking. So here is a list of materials of just one of the artworks in the show. And the reason I mentioned the crossbreed with printmaking very quickly is because this is an old typesetting box. Back in the days when books and newspapers would pull every single letter and arrange it in a set before they would print, it has that feel and also includes a lot of printmaking materials in it. So you get this mosaic printmaking situation. But it also just happens to be a perfect example of a bipolar blind spot, so I'm going to cover that very quickly. There are certain works of art that have a very strong magnetic pull or push to them. A perfect example of a pull would be the work of Patrick Jacobs, who creates these tiny little lenses on the wall, and when you approach that lens, there's an entire universe that feels like it goes on forever. It's about a foot deep, but he is using forced perspective and this lens to make it feel like an infinity of a landscape. So from a distance of like 10 or 15 feet, it's super boring and, and not interesting, and most people skip them entirely. But if you get within a certain distance, you start to notice that something is interesting, and then a magnetic pull straight to them. The exact opposite would be the sculpture of Tony Smith, which is currently on view, by coincidence, at the Pace Gallery in New York City. Uh, when you see these indoors, there's this similar but opposite phenomenon. If you get within a certain distance, you can start to feel a repulsion. That's because from up close, they look like this, and, and they require you to, to, to step back. Most works of art don't have a magnetic pull or draw at all. A perfect example would be Monet, and though it is obviously enjoyable from up close or far away, there's never a moment in that experience where you feel unsatisfied. Kind of a key quality to polar works is that there's a moment where you feel really unsatisfied, really bored, you're missing the entire thing until you catch a magnetic draw. So you can see how weird and important a work like Peter Lind Busk is that is bipolar with a blind spot. Oh my god, this is so cool. There's, there's a moment where you feel that pull of the material and you get really, really close and you're loving your life. But there's also a moment when you back up where suddenly you're repelled so that you can try to make sense of the general composition of these abstracted human figures or whatever is going on, which, by the way, requires you to remember what you saw up close when you go back or remember what you saw when you were back as you go close. You're holding two things in your head at the same time. And so there's this space that where you're halfway between feeling those two pulls that I call the blind spot where the work is unsatisfying and boring and not interesting. I can't tell you how many times I've been in this gallery, like loving my life, and then someone will walk in the gallery, stand in the middle of the gallery, which is the worst place to stand because you're not feeling either one of those pulls. They'll stand there for maybe two seconds, feel bored, and leave the gallery, missing everything. This one, this one might be my personal favorite because so many people are missing it even when they enter the gallery, and that might be the coolest secret of all. 
Peter Lindbusk is on view at the Derek Eller Gallery through May 26th. Hold on for one second. If you're a loyal fan of this channel, if you're a subscriber and you read the Instagram and the newsletter, stick around. Uh, if it's your first time watching my video, go check out my other videos because they're super good, but I have a message for the regulars. I have this idea and I want to run it by you and get your thoughts really quickly. Sometimes the most interesting part of my private tours is not the information that I've, I've memorized and, and, and share. It's this kind of question and answer conversation that happens throughout a tour about a whole range of subjects. And I thought it would be fun that every other video I release would just be a kind of a question and answer video. So if, if you think that's a good idea, uh, in the comments, leave me a question. It can be about something, an art, art historical concept that you're struggling with, my general thoughts on art education and how to get kids excited about art or your parents excited about art. Uh, you could be an artist and have questions about how to get into a gallery or want me to critique your work on YouTube, which I'd be happy to do, and I am super nice, or maybe you're curious about collecting art and want to know about how that system works. Anything, and if I need to go to a higher level expert, I will do that and try to get them on YouTube. So if you think that's a good idea, in the comments, give me a question. Make sure to hashtag it Q&A. Anywhere in the comment, hashtag Q&A, and that will tell me that, that it's a question that you want answered on YouTube. Otherwise, if you ask me without that hashtag, I'll just answer it in the, in the comments as I normally do. Thank you uh, for watching and, and being a loyal supporter of me uh, uh, for as long as you have been. Uh, it means the world to me. Thank you. I will see you in a couple weeks.